Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this afternoon we're going to have a look at the latest GFS, GM, ESA WF, ESA WF ensembles, GFS ensembles and then the latest from the UK Met Office run as well. It does look like we're going to be having a very warm and dry period over the next seven days um, and then it does look like there is the potential for seeing some more northern blocking building with this high pressure shifting northwards potentially bringing in northerly or easterly winds making things maybe a little bit cooler and maybe a little bit uh, or a few more showers potentially in the east as well we'll also have a look in this video at the nao and the ao um, which if you don't know is the north atlantic oscillation and the arctic oscillation which are indexes which generally show whether it's seeing low pressure dominating or high pressure dominating now it is a lot more complicated than that and i'll go into that in a little bit more depth throughout the middle of the video um, but there are potentially trends we could be um, seeing that could give us maybe the chance of seeing maybe some cold weather throughout autumn and the start of winter um, and i'll explain that a little bit more thoroughly um, when we get to that so if we do have a look at the latest gfs you can see at the moment um, we do have high pressure at the top of the uk it's going to be warm and dry and fairly sunny as well there will maybe a few showers around especially further for the south and the east which maybe a little bit of a cloud around as well but it should break up um, for the most part of the few day, next few days and tomorrow wednesday we could be seeing potentially 25 degrees in a few areas in the north and west towards the center of the high pressure where we do have the warmest upper air temperatures you can see that on the 850 hp temperature chart However, as we head through Thursday into Friday, you can see some cooler areas coming to the far southeast associated with the low pressure system over north and eastern Europe. Now, that potentially could bring in some more cloud and maybe a bit of drizzle here or there in the southeast. Shouldn't be too much um, in the way of cloud and rain, but we just have to really keep an eye on it um, as it may be at times a little bit drizzly here or there for some areas in the east. Beyond that, high pressure continually stays in control. And then we do see as we head towards day 10, northern blocking building a little bit. We do see that high pressure trend towards Greenland. We see high pressure trend towards Scandinavia. And we are seeing potentially some northerly winds. Now, we do see a potentially tropical system developing towards day 10, which may give some energy back to the southern half of jet stream, which may bring in low pressure once again for the south and east. But you can see generally the pattern is north or northeasterly winds. Nothing really coming from the south or west, as high pressure looks like it's going to be sitting out in the Atlantic if not towards Greenland. As we're right towards the end of the run, high pressure does take control once again, and we do get a little bit more westerly. But again, it's right in the longer end of the forecast, so we can't really take anything too literally at this stage. Just a little bit uncertain beyond day 10. But it definitely does look like high pressure can be dominating for the next seven days, and then towards 10 days is where high pressure could be um, moving northwards, potentially giving us some northern blocking. If we see how the GEM um, compares, you can see high pressure again is in control. We see that cold front move through each Thursday. And then high pressure generally stays in control, moving northwards as we head into next week, bringing in east or northeasterly winds. You can see a lot of high pressure is around towards Greenland as well. And you can see a real muddled areas of low pressure, which shows how the jet stream is really not in um, a sort of straight line across the Atlantic, got a lot of amplification in it and is split apart, giving us this really quite mixed picture. But generally for the UK, it is easterly winds with high pressure to our north with northern blocking. We'll be generally fairly dry, especially further northwards, um, and maybe a little bit more chilly further south and eastwards with that easterly wind and maybe a few showers around again. Not really a washout or anything, but will be not quite as pleasant as we've seen as we are seeing and we're going to see for this week. If we have a look at the East MWF, you see high pressure and control at the moment. Quite a warm day, of course, Wednesday and potentially into Thursday as well for Western areas. And then we see that cold front move through in the east. High pressure stays in control. And then it moves over the top of the UK, not quite making it far as north as the other models were showing, but still has it over the top of the UK, pulling in maybe a slight easterly breeze. But you can see how the Atlantic really no powerful jet stream. It's confined further northwards, which is symbolic generally um, of uh, northern blocking taking control especially over the top of the uk and towards part of northern canada as well if we do have a look at the nao and the ao now i'll go into detail this i may do a video um some point during this autumn going into much more detail but i'll skim over it now so basically the north Ant atlantic oscillation is an index which shows the strength of the high pressure of the azores compared to the low pressure over Iceland. When it is positive, low pressure over Iceland is much more, uh, is much stronger 
um, than the high pressure over the Azores in comparison, which generally means over the UK we're going to be seeing westerly winds. Um, Westerly winds uh, and bringing in sort of milder conditions, especially on autumn and winter, potentially stormy conditions as well. And for the summer, it generally does bring in warm, humid air, so we could see warm weather at times, but also has a lot of showers and thunderstorms with it. When the NAO is negative in the North Atlantic, we're seeing more high pressure building as the Azores high is much stronger compared to a weaker Icelandic low, which generally means with the North Atlantic, we're seeing a lot more amplification in the jet stream. And that gives us potentially of northerly winds um, or at least high pressure over the top of the UK. Now, you can see that it does, um, we've had generally a positive NAO over this summer. There have been blips of negative NAO here or there, but generally it has been pretty positive or around neutral to positive for most of the summer from sort of late May all the way until sort of middle of August. Now, the NAO and AO check. Uh, tend to go in cycles of a few months. Now, it's not, no, not really an exact science. That is just its trends normally. Um, and it does look like we have had a pretty positive trend at the moment. And it does look like we're going to be going negative, quite substantially negative. And we're going to be going negative for at least a few weeks. And there's the potential that this could be a sign that we're starting to see um, a cycle of negative NAO. Now, it's way too early, really, to say that it's going to be a cold winter or a cold autumn, but it's just giving us signs, that it, or positive signs, if, for those out there who want some frosty weather for our autumn and potentially snow as we head into end of November, um, uh, December time. We're not really forecasting anything, but we're just saying there's the trend of a negative NAO, which is gives us more northern blocking, and the potential for more northerly winds and drier, more settled weather. Now, it can change, but it is looking like we could potentially be going into a negative NAO stage. It could flip, of course, into October, November and go really strong westerly winds. But it is looking potentially encouraging as we head into winter with maybe encouraging signs of some colder weather um, towards the end of autumn, uh, early, um, early winter. If we have a look at the AO, you can see again it's been largely positive over the course of the summer, with a few dips to negative, and you can see at the moment it is, it is as well going pretty negative um, throughout the end of August into the start of September, and of course again can be um, symbolic of cold weather, um, as the AO is the is whether it's high pressure, uh, higher pressure or lower pressure than sort of normal over the Arctic, with positive AO tending to a strong polar vortex, um, or at least strong low pressure, because there isn't really a polar vortex during the summer, um, but during the winter it would be a very strong polar vortex. Um, uh, if we saw negative AO in symbolic of northern blocking once again over the Arctic or Greenland, etc., bringing in colder air into the lower or mid latitudes. So we'll have to keep an eye on what it does over the next few weeks and the next couple of months. But it's just something we need to keep an eye on, whether we do see a quite a long NAO or AO negative cycle, similar to what we've seen over the summer, where we get two, maybe three months of pretty consistent positive NAO and AO. It'll be interesting to see if we see that now with the negative side, because it is, of course, if we see both negative NAO and AO, it is a pretty strong signal. We're going to be seeing colder than average conditions and the potential as we head into November, December, January, February, it would be uh, it would give very, very good signals for the potential um, for conditions for snow. Now, as I said a couple minutes ago, it is not a forecast. It is just sort of trends we are uh, we are watching. Um, and I'll be looking at this further over the next few weeks and months um, to give us good indications of whether we're going to be seeing some storm weather or we're going to be seeing um, a continuing negative pattern, which would, of course, be drier, potentially frostier as colder nights come in and colder air generally does build over the north. So if we do have a look at the ECMWF ensembles, 
this does give us a very good idea of what we're going to be seeing with the negative and the uh, negative NAO and negative AO. You can see as we head towards the last day of August, you can see generally high pressure at the top of the UK or maybe just to our north. You can see generally high pressure is to our north, low pressure to our south, which is symbolic, of course, of a negative NAO and negative AO. This will give, of course, easterly winds, potentially a little bit cooler than average uh, here or there. But northern and western areas, if we do see warmer, sit under the high pressure, which we can still get this time of year as we are really just coming out of summer. Um, so there's still a lot of warm air around. It can still feel fairly pleasant for the northwards and westwards. But we do, where we do see that nippy east or northeasterly wind, it may be, feel a little bit chilly at times. You can see that as we move to the first days of November, massive northern blocking over the top of the of the UK and to our north, and this would be a really snowy and cold pattern. Give it three month in three months or two and a half three months time. So that's why it's important to keep an eye on the NAO and AO because if we do see that very persistent negative patterns that we can see or um, that we can see um, at times, we could be seeing these patterns. Um, continue throughout the autumn winter we could be seeing some cold weather potentially coming as well but you can see all the way as we head to right towards the end of the run all of the ensembles really have northern blocking around except maybe this nine here which have the the blocking and the high pressure a bit further southwards maybe low pressure more to our north but you can see generally all of them have higher pressure towards iceland and towards greenland as well so very interesting to see that, and that's sort of 8th of September. So we're going to be seeing maybe three weeks now of consistent negative NAO and AO, which is more and more encouraging for this sort of um, repetitive pattern and continual blocking pattern that we could be seeing setting up. Now, as I said earlier, of course, it's not a forecast that we're going to be guaranteeing to see a cold autumn and cold winter. It is just one good general sign because if we were seeing the opposite with a very powerful um, jet stream at this moment we would be uh, looking at autumn as potentially being quite stormy um, as again would show a general trend of above average jet stream strength um, and above average uh, in terms of low pressure strength over the north pole and the northern latitudes as well so we we'll just have to keep an eye on it, of course. It's not an exact science. It's very difficult to forecast these things more than two weeks in advance. So we are always do need to look at trends. And it's just one trend that is looking positive um, if you are liking colder and snowier weather into the end of autumn and early winter. If we do have a look at the GFS ensemble, as you can see over the next couple of days, the temperature is going to be on the up, with temperatures peaking around 25, 26 degrees in a few areas uh, over the next couple of days. And then we see that drop with that colder front moving through in the southeast. And then generally temperatures stay above or maybe just below average for a good few days. And as we're first, towards the first few days of September, you can see there are a few precipita precipitation spikes here or there, but generally nothing too much. And just generally for some nice showers and some drizzle. You can see across the longer term, temperatures are really going to just be around average. Maybe a few of the ensemble members going quite cold, uh, a good maybe five, six, seven degrees colder than, uh, than average. And that is because we will see that high pressure orientate in such a position that it brings in northerly winds from the Arctic. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Um, and you can see generally there's not too many or really quite warm on some members either, maybe one or two, but generally the majority are around average or, or just either side with a few um, precipitation spikes here or there. If you have a look at Glasgow, which gives us uh, an idea of what we're going to be seeing further northwards, you can see a lot um, of warmer weather over the next couple of days with some very dry conditions. But as we head towards the first week of September, you see potentially for some more rain here or there. Again, it is in the very long term, and it would be symbolic of more northerly winds with a lot of showers coming in, and maybe even sort of westerly winds as well over the top of the high pressure um, in the scenario where the high pressure is a little bit uh, sitting a little bit further southwards. But you can see the majority of ensemble members are around, maybe above average, but you can see there are quite a few going quite cold, uh, getting down to sort of minus 2, minus 3 degrees at 850 HPA, which is good, sort of 8, 9, 10 degrees degrees colder than average um, as we do see northern blocking um, in a few or real real strong northern blocking let's just say in a few of these ensemble members so i'll have to keep an eye on that that could bring some early frost potentially through september and maybe some chillier weather as well so we have to keep an eye on that and if we do have a look at the sea level pressure you can see generally a lot of high pressure around. You can see a few, of course, uh, low pressure ensembles coming through, but generally the majority have got high pressure, symbolic of high pressure sitting over the top of Scotland. And again, that is northern blocking potentially 
building in. If we do have a look at the UK Met Office precipitation charts, you can see not really too much rain around at the moment. You can see the potential for a few showers to drift in across the east at times over the next few days, but generally things are looking very dry. Through Thursdays, that cold front moves through. We could see some drizzle and some cloud here or there, but nothing too much. And then in the far southeast, throughout the weekend, potentially a few showers if we have that easterly wind. If we do have a look at the temperatures, you can see generally... Um, this afternoon, we've seen temperatures getting to around 21, 22, 23 degrees in a few areas, feeling quite warm. And then tomorrow is where we could see temperatures really rise, potentially 25, 26 degrees in a few places, especially over Scotland, Ireland, potentially. Further southwards, maybe only 20, 21 degrees or so, where we do have a bit more of an easterly wind moving in. Through Thursday, that cold front does move through in the east, so it could, could hold temperatures down a little bit, so only mid to high teens. But then... 20s further westwards and in the south as well, potentially in Ireland, 23, 24 degrees, feeling quite warm and pleasant. Free Friday, again, 20, 21 degrees quite widely, maybe a little bit cooler in the eastern areas, but generally pretty fine and pleasant. And then for Saturday, temperatures again hovering around 20, 21, 22 degrees or so, which is pretty warm. And we are getting towards the end of August, um, September time, so really anything above 20 degrees is pretty much a bonus this time of year. Um, not hot by any means but is a couple degrees above average, so feeling nice and pleasant. So looking interesting over the next few weeks, get a little bit of a snippet of some trends we could be seeing throughout autumn into the start of winter. So we'll just have to keep an eye on what happens with the NAO and the EAO. Again, as I said, it's not an exact science. It is really just watching trends, um, so I can't really make too much of a prediction from it. It's just looking encouraging at this stage for cold um, weather, potentially um, towards the end of August. So anyway, make sure you do go out and enjoy the weather over the next week or so. We could be seeing some colder conditions potentially coming next week. We do have a bit of an unlocking around. Um, so this could be really the last opportunity to get some really nice, fine and dry weather um, uh, in many areas with the temperatures feeling quite pleasant as well. So do go out and enjoy. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you again for another video soon.